total testosterone and free testosterone. So what's the difference there? Yeah, well, it's kind of funny because biologically, like the only testosterone that actually matters is free testosterone. Yet we don't routinely use that for screening. And that's actually uh, a bit of a flaw in the published scientific data. Because if you look at it, what happens to testosterone in the body is that the majority of testosterone, maybe 98% of it, is actually bound by two proteins, uh, sex hormone binding globulin primarily, and then to a lesser extent, uh, albumin. And whenever testosterone is bound to protein, it can't be metabolically active. It's not free to bind to the androgen receptor and exert its you know terminal effect, which is you know changing you know transcription of proteins you know in the in the cell nucleus. So uh, in reality, it's that free testosterone that matters. But no one can really agree on the best way to measure free mm -hmm. testosterone. Um, the gold standard is this really complex test called equilibrium dialysis, which nobody actually does in clinical practice because it's so challenging to do and very time consuming. And so most people will use a calculator free testosterone. But when all of the original studies were done trying to establish the thresholds for low testosterone and average testosterone levels across the population, that wasn't done, right? It's more expensive to do that. So everything was measured against total testosterone. So we don't really have established really good thresholds for free testosterone. Mm -hmm. I, many have been proposed and there's a lot of uh, data that you can find that may support one versus another, but the majority of the thresholds that are in guidelines are all based on total testosterone.